Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to attempt to do a discussion video with literally no planning or anything. I was about to sit here and do my Terry Pratchett book tour, which is why I'm holding some Discworld books here. These are just, I think, the last two books. There are like 60 books. There are a lot of books down here. So I was going to film that, and then I thought I just wanted to, I guess, add my two cents to a discussion, or several discussions really, that have been going around uh, BookTube and, you know, on Facebook and associated groups and that kind of stuff. And that's really, it's all about reviews and what makes a review. So for example, Michael at Catalyst Reads did a video on uh, the difference between a review and a book talk. I know I've seen uh, Steve Donahue and Bull Book Geek, both of those have also posted Kind of these, uh, their videos are more about the difference between sort of subjectivity and objectivity and whether, uh, you know, whether a book review should be subjective or whether it should be objective. And this then touches upon something else, which I haven't seen anyone talk about, but something that I've been thinking recently. So I'm going to attempt to tie all of this together without any pre-planning here, I guess. Another thing that I saw, and I can't remember who it was, it might have been an indie insomniac. And we've been discussing this in Harriet Rosie's bookish stars groups as well on Facebook. And, and, and this is basically the idea of, you know, reviewing more obscure books on BookTube and why people don't do it. And a lot of this, again, ties back in to what a review actually is. And I do kind of agree with what's been said in terms of a lot of the reviews on BookTube are more like somebody will read you the blurb and they'll maybe summarize the plot for a couple minutes and then um <laughs> who is it it might have been plots and points even did a video as well where he was like and then at this point they'll just be like okay bye now see you if you don't want to hear spoilers go away bye now bye and it <laughs> so you watch the first two minutes of a video and then they're basically telling you to leave unless you've read the book which is kind of useless for people who might want to watch a review to see whether they want to read a book now for me personally and i think this kind of highlights part of the problem I will watch review videos as long as A, I've either I've got to have either read the book or B, I have no intention of reading the book. If I know that within the next couple months I'm going to read the book, I'll avoid the reviews because I don't want what other people say in their reviews to then impact my own thoughts. Now, another thing as well that has been kind of brought up in various of these videos. I'm not going to try and cite which video and who said what because I just, you should check out all of the discussions around this really. And I'm kind of late to the party anyway, I think. So you've probably seen most of these go around. But um, for me, it seems to me that, you know, one of the problems we talk about is that people don't make enough review videos. And then when they do make review videos, nobody re uh, watches them. Part of the problem is, again, is that maybe people don't want to watch them because they don't want to be spoiled or they would prefer to watch a wrap-up video, which is, I guess, a series of mini-reviews, which this opens up a whole other dialogue as well about wrap-ups versus reviews, which are better, all this stuff. And, um, I mean, personally, my feeling is that, as booktubers, it's almost our responsibility to create the kind of content that we want to see. You know, I think that there's no point in us having these debates about, oh, well, is it a review? Is it, a, you know, a wrap-up? Is it a response? Is it a discussion? And there's no point, like, having these debates if we, like, not willing to then create our own videos that show what we think a review should be. So, personally, I think my reviews are more subjective. And there is a reason for that, which we'll get to in a minute. I'm trying to st structure this as much as possible. Different reviewers will take a different approach to doing a review. And I think that's fine. And I don't, personally, I think arguing about whether something is a review or a discussion or whatever, I think it's all kind of a moot point. I think lump them all in together, why not? And you'll actually notice on my channel now, on my reviews and discussions or whatever you want to call them, I've got all of in square brackets saying review slash discussion and then spoilers after it. Just, just to kind of cover all the bases, I guess. But again, I'm also, and I know Plots and Points was definitely the one who said this. He was like, I don't care about spoilers. Like, it, it doesn't matter. I actually partly think that part of the reason why people aren't making review videos is because they're worried to make review videos because there's all this dialogue about is it a review, is it a discussion, what is it, should you be doing this, should you be doing that, and it's quite off-putting. I can see why. You would you would skip doing a review and just do a tag or something. Another thing as well is that how do you review a book that you know everyone else likes and you didn't enjoy or you just thought was okay or something? Like I'm nervous about posting my Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens agenda review because I just thought it was okay and everyone else raves about this book. And I don't want to 
be ostracized or whatever even though it's just my opinion and I think that's what a review should be it should be opinion it should be subjective I know people argue oh well you can be really objective about things and it's true you can focus being more objective and trying to you know take away any of the subjective element but I still think there's always an element of subjectivity and this brings me on to my next point which is that for me a, a book isn't like a, a static object you can't give an objective review of a book because it's not an objective thing so yeah, you've got the book which is, you know, the manuscript and let's say we assume that every book only has one final manuscript and it doesn't include the various different edited versions, you know, whether one version's got a typo that makes it slightly different. Even if we assume that a book is a fixed thing that is a set of words and exi exactly this, you know, layout and all of this stuff, which is another point because aesthetics come into the come come into the equation when you're reviewing a book. So the same book can look totally different if it's published by two different companies which should affect the review because for me anyway I'm reviewing the book as an entire thing you know they say you shouldn't judge a book by a cover but you do judge a book by a cover we all do you know even if we try and fight against that urge you will have an automatic emotional response to a cover and it's the same with when you read a book as well as a reader everything that you've experienced in your life then goes into your understanding of the book now arguably it may be slightly different for something like non-fiction I guess um, or like a reference book or something like that where you can be a lot more objective but with something like a novel for example even uh, if somebody says the curtains are red two different readers will see two different shades of red it's not you know what I mean the the final thing of the experience of reading that book isn't a fixed thing that can be looked at objectively because the two come together the book itself and then the readers prior life experiences or whatever you call it those two come together and combine they make the experience of reading this book and even if you do try and look at something objectively you're actually subjectively being objective about it like you're looking at it objectively through what to you subjectively objectivism is so so there is no you know I think it's a sliding scale don't get me wrong I, I have a lot of respect for people who do do objective objective reviews of books but even if you get to 99.99% there is still that 0.001% of subjectivity that just by its nature has to go into it you know it's like good and evil you can have you can't have one without the other that it's a sliding scale it's not a binary you know this review is objective and this one is subjective no every review is subjective and objective in fact no that's not even true every view is at least subjective in some way but not necessarily objective people will unashamedly subjectively review a book and again I like that as well and I think this again comes back to what you're watching reviews and stuff for so for me if I watch Todd the Librarian review some sci-fi novel I want to hear about his emotional response I want to hear about how it made him feel I want to hear him tell me he couldn't put it down and you know I don't as much as I am happy to also hear you know there was some great vocabulary used and maybe for him to read out a quote here and there and to synopsize it and do all this stuff I want to hear Todd's specific experience that's why I watch his channel like it, it, I relate to him. I know what else he's read. I know how else that's made him feel. If all of our reviews were 100% objective with no subjectivity in them, all of our reviews would be exactly the same and there would be no point even reading them really. You'd read one and it would be exactly the same as the other. Even in terms of the choice of words or how you modulate your voice when you talk about it, it's your subjective opinion of that book being superimposed on what you're objectively trying to say. So. I still refuse to believe there is such a thing as a 100% objective review of anything. This brings me on to the other thing that I wanted to discuss, which, uh, I, and I believe again, I think it was Indie Insomniac or somebody like that. I'll link to the videos below, all of the ones that I can think of that touched on this. But anyway, somebody was talking about how on Booktube, people tend to not review more obscure indie books and that sort of thing. And part of this comes back to the reason that with no set standard for what a review even consists of or what it is, people tend to not watch reviews of books they haven't read because they don't want to see a spoiler. And obviously if it's an obscure book, fewer people have read it. Now, I actually think on my channel, in, in personally with my experience, I do think reviews probably do get fewer views than other stuff. But at the same time, I don't know I necessarily get fewer views on an indie review 
than on a, or say, a, my John Green Turtles All the Way Down review or something like that. And I have actually faced the quandary of going, well, shall I post this indie review that was... So I posted Larry Wiener, the uh, the review for the Larry Wiener book I read, which is called uh, Hindu Sex Aliens. And that's the third book of the trilogy, and it's indie. So I was like, I don't even know if anyone's going to watch this, but people did. So big shout out to everyone who watched that. Again, I just wanted to support some indie authors, really. And to, to book the trend and to post these reviews for more obscure books. Personally, I'm not too bothered about all these up-and-coming books you know, I think the Bells is the current one that everyone's going on about. And I don't know, I've heard maybe 10 positive reviews and two negatives. And I trust the two negatives more than those 10 positives. So I tend to not get too excited about new books anyway. And I do enjoy reading backlist stuff. I want to read Agatha Christie's entire back catalogue, for example. And I'll review what I can along the way. Equally, I like to support indie authors. So me and Todd are doing our indie read-along. So I'm trying to do what I can on my channel to spread the word for these more about these more obscure books perhaps that's because I myself am a writer I don't know maybe it's just trying to show a bit of so, you know solidarity there but for me anyway it all comes back to what I as a viewer want to see and I had this conversation with a few people recently as well like a lot of people join booktube because they're watching booktubers and they're like well why is nobody talking about this book and why is nobody talking about that book and they have this epiphany and you're like actually the reason nobody's talking about it is because it needs somebody like me, who is reading it, <laughs> to go and talk about it. And so I think it's great when people take to booktube to start talking about books that they haven't seen anyone else talk about, or, you know, they'll specialise in a specific genre, like Cortagonist here on booktube only does cosy mysteries, or, well, predominantly 95% cosy mysteries. And it's amazing! Peg, the book prize addict, she just specialises in book prizes, and it's great to see, like, somebody's passion for something specific like that, that previously you know where where else would you have found <laughs> like this information so i think it's great and i'm and i think people should they should be the change they want to see on booktube you know you should make the videos you want to watch and if that is indie authors make book reviews about indie authors you know if it is more stuff about john green and the bells coming out and all this stuff if you want to talk about sarah j maas like fine you can do that I probably won't watch it, and the reason that I won't, and this is my final point of this video really, is that even when people do make book reviews and stuff, they're reviewing all the same books, and for me as a viewer, there's no way I'm going to watch 20 different people review Throne of Glass. Like, I might watch one or two, if you're lucky, and then I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'm not going to watch every time somebody posts the same <laughs> a review of the same book. And that's why I feel like we should be more diverse as a community and stop flocking to all of the you know whatever the current best sellers are or whatever because after you've seen one or two people talk about them it gets boring for me as a viewer i just switch off i'll just watch the next video you know todd's got a 10 minute tag it where he's talking about classic sci-fi fantastic so those are my thoughts really i mean i think as a community we need to be more live and let live i i, I appreciate having you know these discussion videos go up and stuff like that and i think that's great but i think also Sometimes we can be overly negative to a point where it can be off-putting. I, I certainly have felt a bit of pressure since watching all these discussions about reviews and whatnot. And I know that people generally like my reviews, except for that one bastard who disliked my Sir Arthur Conan Doyle review because I didn't like uh, the sign of the four as much on re-listening to it because it was racist. <laughs> Lots of little pygmy men firing blow darts. I feel as though a lot of people read things so they can talk about them on booktube whereas i'm the other way around i talk about things on booktube because i've read them so maybe there might be the odd one or two that i pick up because i've heard of it on booktube but it's five percent something like that I, I don't get many books from booktube what i do is i see a lot of other people reading books that i've already got on my list or whatever because i go out of my way to watch people talk about daphne de maurier or something like that you know even though i still haven't read or i need to get there i just think as a as a community we are really diverse and that's what's so powerful about booktube and I feel as though if you just read the same top books as everybody else and you don't go out of your way to read more diversely and to actually offer some reviews uh, for, for you know for more obscure books for lesser known books for let's face it for books where the author needs it like Cassandra Clare isn't going to notice if you post a review of City of Bones but if you wrote a review or if you post a review of Driven by Dane Cobain hint hint then 
He's going to notice, you know. <laughs> His Google alerts are going to go off. He's going to come in and subscribe to your channel and be like, oh my god. We owe it to ourselves, you know. We are diverse, but we don't show it if we're all reading the same books. And, and I think that's a shame. And that's why I think actually most of my viewing now, I watch people who are like 40 plus years old. I like seeing people who read something a bit different or have a different opinion or who just generally don't just post the same crap. You know, that's the whole beauty of booktube is that we can all do what we want. And if, you know, if you're not enjoying someone's videos, don't watch them. You know, if you see, if somebody's not talking about, I don't know, whatever author, so-and-so, like, talk about them yourself. But yeah, I feel as though I got really wound up while, while talking here. I have no idea if any of this made any sense, because like I say, there was no plan to this. I literally just shut, <laughs> shut down. I shut down and started started talking. This probably was a bit shit, wasn't it? So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know what you think about all of this stuff uh, in the comments. Specifically, I'd like to know your opinion more on indies, really, and obscure books. Like, do you go out of your way to read them, or are you kind of one of the one of those who would prefer to read the hot and up and coming books and get all the pre-releases and all that stuff? I'm talking bollocks. I'm gonna go now. So thanks a lot for watching. Hit subscribe if you'd like more bookish videos. Usually they're slightly more prepared than this, but only very slightly. And I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.